Uh, God, as we come to your word this morning, we, we come with uh, open hearts, we come with uh, receptive hearts, and we want to hear your Holy Spirit speaking to us. God, we don't really care too much about what a person says, but Lord, we do need to hear what you say to us this morning. Speak into our hearts and into our lives, and we will obey in faith and quickly in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So if you have your Bibles with you, turn to Acts 18. And uh, this is, I struggled with what shall I title this? And at last minute, actually, I changed it. So I'm just going to say between Corinth and Ephesus, because these are the two, uh, these are the two churches that, uh, that w where we are. And we're coming to the end of uh, uh, Paul's second missionary journey. And if you were to look at my notes, you would see that I'm covering exactly the same uh, passage in Acts that I did the last time we spoke, but we're going to come at it from a different angle, a different perspective. Um, and so this morning, uh, so as we come from a different perspective, I w I'm going to wrap up the second mi missionary journey, and then we're going to pause our study of Acts for a while. Some of you are going, thank Lord, <laughs> and we'll pick it up again next year. The Lord's leading in another, uh, for me, leading in another direction. Um, in the weeks ahead, and we've got our anniversary coming up. But we're going to, uh, there, there, there are so many things here that are helpful to us this morning. There are a bunch of takeaways in this passage, so that's what we're going to look at. So if you have your Bibles, whichever way, whether it's paper or it's electronic, go, go for it. Um, and we look at this, so here we go. And uh, we're going to... He has been in Corinth. Now, last time we got him, we got Paul all the way to Ephesus and then on. So we're going to look again as well. Look with me here as we look at the passage. He's here. Then he goes to Ephesus. Let me just read it for us really quickly. Then he set sail from, from Corinth. He, Paul, Paul, Silas, Priscilla, and Aquila, right? So the power couple is with him. Uh, remember the power couple, Priscilla and Aquila? They are lay people. They are not, uh, they work with their hands to make a living. They're business people. That's a lot of you here this morning. That's a lot of you. And so you can see yourself here. And, and we see what wonderful things happen through them. He takes Priscilla and Aquila with him, which to us is a bit strange because he's at the end of his journey and he knows because he set sail for Syria. Syria is all the way back where, where he was before. That's where, he, that's where he started out. And he's going home now. Well, why is he taking Priscilla and Aquila? Well, we find out very shortly. They stopped first at the port of Ephesus. So from here, they travel straight across to Ephesus. And then, uh, I'm skipping a little bit, he set sail from Ephesus. Where is he gonna go after he set sail? Uh, I do apologize, I can't make those arrows do what I want them to do. Those of you that are good with that, you can say, well, Pastor Jennifer, this is what you do to make that arrow loop. I couldn't do it. Anyhow, so just imagine that they're sailing, okay? Then he set sail from Ephesus and the next stop was at the port of what? S how to pronounce that? Caesarea. Okay. So Caesarea, but that's not where he uh, that's not where he ends. And from there he went up and visited the church at Jerusalem. No, 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 no. Not up. That's down. Now remember Jerusalem. It's according to elevation. So Jerusalem was high. So it looks like he's going down, but he goes up. So he goes to Jerusalem, and then he went back to Antioch. So all the way, uh, apologize to all of you visual people, I didn't get all the arrows quite right. Well, anyhow, um, but you get the picture, okay? So don't forget, remember what, what happened in Caesarea? Really big deal. Some chapters ago with Peter, chapter 10, remember? Who? The Roman centurion begins with a C. Cornelius. Okay, remember Cornelius was praying and an angel appears to him. He says, your prayers have been heard and, and go send to Joppa for, for a man who's staying with Simon the Tanner. He's, and he will come to you and he's going to tell you about that. And then remember in Caesarea, Cornelius gathered his household and many others, a Greek, not only a Greek, he's part of the occupation army. And God in his graciousness pours out the Holy Spirit as they listen, respond, and believe. That's what God does. Isn't it great? 
If he does it for them, he does it for us as well, because God never changes. So that was, that was uh, Caesarea. Now, and then he goes back up to uh, Antioch. Why is Antioch important? Where is Paul's home church? Antioch, right? Antioch. Antioch is Paul's home church. He returns. Hey, here's one of our take here's another takeaway. We're gonna have a lot of takeaways this morning. Here's the great Apostle Paul. He has a home church. He has a home church. He has a place where he says, This is my home church. I go there, I'm part of the family there, I give and I take in that place. It's his home church. And he's the great Apostle Paul. If you for all of his travel and all of his ministry and all of his calling, he has roots and he has a church home. And he travels a lot. Brothers and sisters, do you have roots in a church home? You should. If you're going to be healthy and grow, you must. You must. That's the only way. You know, uh, Pastor Renee and I talk about it sometimes, but one of our... We've gotten used to it, but it used to really be a frustration. And you can talk to any pastor, and he or she will tell you the same thing. There are, in our church families, there are floaters and jumpers. There really are. There are those that jump from church to church. This is my church. And seven months later, boom, boom. This is my church. And the new church is great, and the old church is, that was such, really, it was such a bad church, they don't know. And, you know, and then, but that's not going to last long. And then they jump to another church. So there's that. And then there are floaters as well. And the floaters are different from the jumpers. The floaters, they, they never, they don't say bad things about any church. They just kind of go here, I'm blessed here, and I'm blessed here, and I'm blessed here. And they never develop roots anywhere. Brothers and sisters, there's danger in floating and in jumping. There really is. God has designed us and his church to be a place where we find a home. So I want to challenge you. If you've got floating or jumping tendencies, find a church and put down some roots. And there you will give and there you will receive. That's God's plan for every one of us for every one of us and if you say well lighthouse is kind of whatever you know what that's okay there are lots of churches in hong kong find a church where the holy spirit ministers to you where you can receive and where you can give and let that be your church home amen, amen. that was a little bit wimpy but that's true that's a, that's a, a takeaway for us and so paul himself has a church home but notice before he goes to antioch where does he go first he goes to Jerusalem, the mother church. Do you think the uh, Jerusalem council, those senior elder apostles, sent a message to Paul and said, hey, Paul, come here, boy. Tell us what you've been doing. There's no indication of that. Here's another takeaway for us. Here's the great apostle Paul, and Paul chooses humility and submission in a way as he goes to Jerusalem and he shares with them this is what happened this is how God led this is how Gentiles and Jews have turned to the living God and he goes to the he willingly does that he willingly does that and I find that that's so opposed to the spirit that is very much a part of the church world this day where we don't submit to anybody nobody can tell us anything I'm not talking about you specifically, but in, in, in general. But I have seen that, and you have seen it as well. And we feel it at times. Nobody tells me anything. Nobody's my boss. And that's dangerous territory as well. Paul himself, he goes back to the church, and he honors those senior, those apostles um, that walked with Jesus and that are leading the church there. And he shares with them, and then he goes back to Antioch. And in Antioch, the Bible doesn't tell us this time, but of course he gives a report. Because that's where he started out. Um, he started out in Antioch, he comes all the way back to Antioch. Um, and so we see this beautiful picture. And so uh, he comes to the end of his second journey, and he's going to start his third journey. And that's where we're going to, when we start to take a break, when we take a break at the end of this morning, then that, this is where we'll be. So let's get back to this transition time between Corinth and between Ephesus. Okay, what is there here for us this morning? I would have included between Corinth and Ephesus, between Paul and Apollos, but that would have made the title a bit, little bit long. So I've just chosen the two cities because it's a... Uh, it's, uh, um, 
we can look at it in that way. Now, they land in Ephesus, and Paul goes into the city for a while to preach in the synagogue. How long is he there? We don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us. It's not a real long time. And I want to encourage you in something this morning. If you don't pay attention, you're going to miss it. And let's be honest, when I bring this up, I'll, a lot of us are going to say, oh, I missed that. And this is what I want us to see this morning. Uh, remember in the early days of the second missionary journey, at the beginning of this, let's look at the next slide. Uh, go back, we go back a couple of chapters or so and look with me at this. Let me read it again. So Paul and Sa Silas, remember they started out over here and they're traveling and I've added something to our map this time. They traveled through the area of Phrygia and Galatia. That's all kind of right in here. Do y'all remember this? Because we talked about it. Because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia. Uh-huh. Brothers and sisters, I have a secret for you this morning. Do you have your Bibles? You probably didn't know this. In your Bible, at the end of your Bible, there's this wonderful resource. Look at this. There are some maps. See, that's the problem with clicking, <laughs> unfortunately. And I'm not knocking electronics, um, but I, personally, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a dinosaur. But in the back of your Bible, there's this, you, di you didn't know this was back here, did you? You, you didn't know. You just thought this, this was, these were extra colored pages. You look at that. My Bible has color in the back. Here we are. Guess what? It's a great resource. And if we're honest, most of us would say, I never look back there. Or I looked once, right? But generally, I never look. Let me show you another resource, too. Sometimes, depending on your Bible, if you have a study Bible, look at this. Right there where you're reading, there are maps also. Right there. Right there. You don't even have to turn to the back of the Bible. Now, I'm making a point for a reason. Most of us never look at maps, right? May I encourage you that if you will, you'll see some things that you would have missed otherwise. Because early in that trip, Paul and Silas are here, and they want to go to the province of Asia. And if you didn't look at the map, then you would have missed something. In the province of Asia, so they're right around here. I'm not going to get out my laser pointer. I don't want to get in trouble this morning. <laughs> if, I'll use my finger. No problem. So they're over here. and. Paul wants to go here into the province of Asia. Those of us that know geography, what's that pl what is that country today? Turkey. There you go. Okay, that's Turkey, modern day Turkey. Okay, so all this area is Turkey. But in that day, it was called Asia. Don't get offended, all you Asians. We say we're Asia. In that day, this was Asia, and this was Asia Minor. Okay, that's what it was in that time. And so Paul and Silas want to go there, but look at what it says. The Holy Spirit prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia. What's the biggest city in Asia? It was the second largest city in the known world at that time, after Rome. It was the religious, cultural, and trade and transport uh, city of the whole province of Asia and of that whole region. What city was in Asia? What city? Ding, 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 ding. Ephesus, okay? There's Ephesus right there. He wanted to go this way, and Holy Spirit wouldn't let them. Then they headed north to Bithynia. See, our maps would tell us this, okay? He wanted to go north to Bithynia up there. He didn't make it there. Do you know who did make it there later? Peter. Peter made it there later. Paul didn't get to make it there. Peter did. But what I want us to see is this. Again, the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So instead, they went on through Mysia to the seaport of Troas. And what a good thing, because that's where they picked up Brother Luke as well. But we miss this, and we miss the takeaway and the lesson that comes with this. And so I just want to just camp there for just a minute, and then we'll keep on going this morning. What I want us to see is this. He's been a year and a half in Corinth, the city where God has many people. Paul leaves. He takes Priscilla and Aquila with him. And where do they land? Ephesus, exactly. They land in the place that the Holy Spirit at one point earlier said, no, 
don't go there. Of course Paul wanted to go there. This was part of his plan, a, a, a wise plan. If I go there, it will spread. Well, the Holy Spirit had a different plan. Brothers and sisters, if we rely on our own intelligence, and we're pretty smart, a, a lot of you, you're, you've got it together, you're organized, you're this, you're that. But the Holy Spirit's smarter. And when we submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit and His plans, then a lot of times our very logical, our very reasonable plans get upended. And when the Holy Spirit does that, don't get upset. Just say, okay, Holy Spirit, and keep on going. And so if we're not looking at our maps, we kind of miss that. So that's, that's, that's why I was making a point about that. Um, and they reach this roadblock. And the roadblock is not from the devil. How many of you have ever had a closed door and you have rebuked the devil and you have said, devil, get away from me? I Now, sometimes the devil does set up roadblocks. But if you are a child of God, there are many times in our lives when it is not the devil that closes the door. It is God who closes the door. And here's a takeaway for us. Devil didn't do that. God did that. God did that. God closes some doors, and it's one of his ways of leading us in a best plan and a path for our lives. And that's what happens here. Now, I want us to see something else as we look at this. Paul wants to go to Ephesus. The Holy Spirit says, no, you can't. I wonder what the Holy Spirit said exactly to Paul. Do you think the Holy Spirit said no? Or did the Holy Spirit say, not now or not yet? I think the Holy Spirit just said no. I Me, mean, that's what I think. He just said, no, you can't go this way. But what I want to say is this, and here's another takeaway for us this morning. Brothers and sisters, a lot of times we pray for something. We long for something. We hope for something. And it's something good. And we think, God, this would be a good thing. And we want it. We pray for it. We're knocking. We're trying to make it happen. And God says no. And we get mad at God, don't we? We get a little upset with him. We say, why not? I don't understand. I don't understand. But the answer is no. And what I want to just put out there for us this morning is this. Sometimes it sounds like a no, but it's actually a not now, not yet. A not now and a not yet. The difficulty for us is that we just think, no, I can't. May I say to you that God's closed doors and God's no's are opportunities for you and for me. See, this was Paul. This was Paul. It's for you and for me, an opportunity to say, you know what? I don't understand, but I'm going to obey. I don't understand, I don't like it, but I'm gonna say, okay. I don't, I, I don't even really agree, but okay, God, I believe you know better. May I encourage you in that this morning, if some of you feel like you've got a closed door and it's a no, you wait on God, you see, this says, what does it say? The Holy Spirit prevented them. So you and I have to get together with God to know whether it's the devil closing the door or whether the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. If it's the devil, buddy, you pray and you stand on the authority of the Lord and you fight till that door opens. Amen? Amen. By the way, may I put in a little advertisement here. Some of you have been praying for something for a long time and it hasn't happened yet and you're getting discouraged. Next Sunday afternoon, I want to encourage you to join us. We are going to listen to a great encouragement, a great me message about continuing in prayer for things that have not yet happened. Next Sunday afternoon. But we've got to hear from God. And so there's a, not, there's a not now, there's a no. And it works in us. And so they keep on going. So we go a little bit for, further. And so Paul does make it there. Let's look. They reach Ephesus. So this is, two, this is several, this is about two years later. He arrives in Ephesus. He goes into the synagogue. And what do we read? They asked him to stay for a longer time. He declined. What? 
This is Paul who said, I want to go to Ephesus. I want to go to Ephesus almost two years earlier. And the Holy Spirit said, no. Do you think, here's another takeaway. Do you think it's possible that Paul learned something? That he had something to learn through that? I kind of think so. I kind of think so, because this time, what does Paul say? He doesn't say, hallelujah, made it to Ephesus, my dream has come true. He says, I'll come back if God wills, if God wills. You see, brothers and sisters, that's what God's no, and that's what the closed door works in our lives if we will accept it from God and submit to it from God. Not from the devil, but from God. It works in us a humble and willing spirit to flow with God and to go with God. Amen? Amen. Y'all are a little bit wimpy, but that's okay. That's true. <laughs> that's true. And he says, if God wills, and then he sets sail from Ephesus. Guess what? A short time later, Paul starts his third missionary journey, and he does indeed come back to Ephesus, and he stays there. Do you know how long? Three and a half years. Longer than any other place. Longer than any other church. Three and a half years. Three and a half years. When it's in God's timing, it's good and it's right. It's the best. God's timing is always part of God's plan. There are some things, brothers and sisters, may I just encourage you, and I can think of my own life. There are some things that when I was younger, I prayed for, oh God, this and that. And I was so disappointed that God didn't answer. And I look back now and I say, oh, thank you, Lord, that he didn't say yes. Thank you, Lord, that he didn't open the door. Because if he had, I would have messed it up big time. There are things in God's plan and in God's working with us that we're not yet ready for. Sometimes our character needs to grow. Sometimes we haven't reached a maturity level. Sometimes there are things that need to be worked out of our lives before God can work in us and through us and open doors. So hang in there with God. Don't get discouraged and say, okay, God, yes, and then keep on going. And so he sets sail and he keeps on, he keeps on going. God's timing is always part of God's plan. Amen? Amen. And so he returns, he sets sails from Ephesus, he lands in Caesarea. That's because Caesarea was the big uh, seaport. He'd always land there, and then he would go down to Jerusalem. Okay, so he set sail. Let's leave Paul back in Antioch for a little bit, and let's pick up Apollos, okay? We talked about Apollos meantime. Uh, by the way, uh, Paul leaves a gift in Ephesus. What is the gift? Who is the gift? Aquila and Priscilla, that's right. Pr or Priscilla and Aquila is what the Bible says most of the time. Do you know that people are gifts? People are gifts. God put these special gifts. And Aquila and Priscilla are a great couple for most of us. Because you know what? There aren't a lot of pastors, teachers, apostles, prophets in the church. There really aren't. There aren't so many of them. It's not because pastors and apostles and prophets and teachers, teachers are so special. Not. It's because not so many are needed. Most of the people of the church, most of the work of the church, it's people like Aquila and Priscilla. It really is. People like you. People like you. And so they are there. And then Paul goes back and there in Ephesus, a Jew named Apollos. We talked about this last time. He's got a great spiritual pedigree. He's eloquent and he knew the scriptures well. You know, sometimes, have you ever been around somebody who knows the scriptures well, but they start preaching and three minutes later, you're asleep? right? But he's speaking eloquently as well. And he comes from Alexandria. That's like coming from Harvard or Oxford or Beijing University or Un Philippine University. Net University, of University. I thought it was University of the Philippines and so on. We talked about this last time. He's got a great spiritual pedigree. He has an enthusiastic spirit, which means he was boiling. Uh, or Hong Kong University. Don't want to leave us out, okay? Um, and I'm sorry if I left out your country, as I've said before, and with accuracy. So he's doing it right. He's got a great spiritual pedigree. This is where we ended last time. But he only knew about John's baptism, which was the baptism of water, right? It was a baptism of water. And there was something in Aquila and Priscilla. What was it? It was the Holy Spirit. It was the discernment of the Holy Spirit. They hear him and they know 
there's more. There's more. And this is where we left it last time. There's more. May I say to you this morning, there's more. And I'm not preaching from a pedestal. There's more for all of us. There is. Don't get satisfied with where you are. When we get satisfied with where we are, do you know what happens? We start receiving or we get it here in our thoughts and in our brains and in our intellect. And it doesn't get down into our hearts and into our lives. That's what happens when we think, I've arrived. I know it. I've got good doctrine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard this before. We're in danger when that happens. There's more for each one of us. For Apollos, it was the understanding there is another baptism. It's the baptism of Jesus because Jesus is the one who does it. It's not it, it, Jesus said, I'll return to heaven and the Father and I will send you the Holy Spirit. It's the baptism of Jesus, so we don't have to be afraid of it. If you're a little bit afraid about it, you don't have to be afraid about it. And it's a baptism of fire, of fire. It's, it does something, and, the, and there was more. And so they went, to, they went to Apollos. They explained even more accurately. And we talked about this last time, but I encourage you again. I encourage you again. Keep a teachable spirit. Keep a teachable spirit. Because Apollos was teachable, he was able to teach. Does that make sense? Because he was teachable, he was able to teach. If we do not have a teachable spirit, we're really not so qualified to teach because we can get arrogant, we can get hard, we can get judgmental. But if we will keep a teachable spirit, then God can flow through us if teaching is one of our gifts. Okay? And so Apollos receives more and he gets it from two lay people who are used of the Lord. I imagine, I don't know about you, I'm, I'm afraid I, I might have been tempted right there if I'd been Apollos to say, do you know who I am? I'm Apollos. But he didn't. He didn't, did he? He received what came because it came from God. And so time passes. He's still in Ephesus. He's preaching away. And then Apollos had been thinking about going to Achaia. Achaia? Where's Achaia? In the back of my Bible, I have these colored pages. And if I look in my colored pages in the back of my Bible, do you know what I find out? I'm telling you, it's a great resource, folks. We'd miss it otherwise. Some of you missed it, right, the first time. Let's get it this time. You know where Achaia is? Achaia is the region of Greece. What's the number one city in that area? Come on. Athens was where he stopped, but where's the big city now? Thank you. Corinth. Corinth. So what does Apollos want to do? Apollos says, it's in my heart. I want to go to Corinth. I want to go to Corinth. And the brothers and sisters say, yeah, go. May I say something else to you? Here's another takeaway. When you think God is leading you in a certain way or in a certain ministry, please do not go off like a lone ranger. Bring it before godly people. Let it be part of the family of God. And when it's from God, you re will receive a confirmation. Don't be afraid to bring it before the, before the church. Don't be afraid to share with others because there's wisdom. God gives us wisdom in the family. But I'll tell you this, if all of your godly friends say, I'm not sure about that, I don't know about that, you better pause. Really, just kind of wait. So bring it to the family. And so they say, yes, go. They wrote to the believers in Achaia, asking them to welcome him. Now, may I say something? In the meantime, we know what's going to happen. He's going to go on to Achaia. Actually, he's going to Corinth. That's where he's going. In the meantime, way back in Antioch, you know what Paul's going to do? Paul's going to say, hmm, I'm going to go out again. And you know what Paul's going to do? He's going go to Apo he's gonna go to Ephesus. If this were a Hollywood movie, we would not believe it, would we? We would say, eh, 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 eh. Too many coincidences. This is not realistic. Only the Holy Spirit can do this. But Apollos goes on. He goes to Corinth. Let me ask you something. How can Apollos be a blessing in Corinth? Paul was in Corinth. I mean, seriously, right? If Pastor Paul were your pastor, would you want, like, the B team to come? You know, have you ever thought about it that way? Pastor Paul, he's the A team. He's the A-team. Apollos is the he's, the, he's good, but he's the B-team. 
Do you know what? It's not about the personnel. It's not about the people. It's about God at work in people. And when God works in us and we submit and respond, He can work through us and anybody can be blessed. Anybody can receive. Anybody can receive. Let's see if that happens. He proved to be of great benefit to those who by God's grace had believed. And so God is able to use them, I think because they had a teachable spirit and because he was humble. So that's going on there. He's a great benefit. Pa Apollos receives more. Then he goes on to the church in Corinth. And then Paul, uh, so he's there, and you say, oh, yeah, okay. He was at Corinth, okay? So that's how we, that's confirmed. Paul tr takes the road. This is third miss missionary journey now, okay? Missionary journey number three. Paul arrives at Ephesus. This was your homework. I don't think, I don't know, did anybody do it? I didn't have real high expectations. Remember three weeks ago? I said, okay, this is your homework. No, don't, never mind. <laughs> Pastor Jennifer encouraged herself in the Lord. <laughs> okay. He arrives at Ephesus. He finds some disciples and he asks them, do you see a theme here? Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they answered, no. We have not even heard there's a Holy Spirit. Pause right there. Does that mean they didn't even know what the Holy Spirit was? It cannot be that. Everybody knew that there was a Holy Spirit. That was Old Testament. It was taught. If it was John's baptism, John taught. John had an understanding of the Holy Spirit. What does this mean? What it meant was we have not yet heard that there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we'll see that in just a minute. So there's something in their lives that Paul realizes, hmm, something's missing. And what does he say? Before you say, well, they just weren't born again. I'm sorry. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Those of us that work with language, when you believed, they already believed. And they said, no, we've not even heard. And so Paul asked, what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. And Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him. That is in Jesus. John points to Jesus. Jesus points to God the Father. That's his representation. Those of us that have a hard time with God the Father, and a lot of us do, we may have had terrible father, uh, paternal relationships. A lot of us have that imperfect, broken, harsh, soft, any sort of thing. Don't think of your heavenly father that way. You want to know what God the Father is like? Look at God the Son. Jesus points to God and then Jesus says, I'm going to go back to heaven and then Jesus says, and we're going to send the Holy Spirit. It's a good, he's a good gift. And then when the Holy Spirit comes, what does he do? The Holy Spirit comes, infills, indwells, empowers, works in their lives, and the Holy Spirit points right back to Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He's not weird. He's wonderful. Got it? He's not weird. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. And so Paul says, so he, he says, what does he say? He says, it's about Jesus. So what does he do? They're baptized in the name of Jesus. Paul lays his hands on them. The Holy Spirit came on them because the gift of the Holy Spirit is for you, says Peter, for your children, says Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit, for your children's children, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and for all those who are far off. They were far off, but the promise was for them. And God keeps every promise He makes, brothers and sisters. He keeps every promise. So don't be afraid. Don't shy away. Don't say, well, I got enough. Don't say, well, I've seen some weird things going on. I've seen some weird things going on too. But God's not weird. God's not, people get a little bit weird, but God's not weird, brothers and sisters. Say yes to God. Say yes to Jesus and say yes to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen, amen and amen. And they spoke and the Holy Spirit came on them. They spoke in tongues. They prophesied. And there were about 12 men in all. Who discipled them and, and led them along? Bible doesn't tell us, but a lot of Bible scholars say it was probably Apollos 
in the early days before he himself had received more. Notice one other thing here. Here's another takeaway for you. You know what's great about this? On hearing this, boom. Have you noticed that before? On hearing this, they were baptized. On hearing this, they were baptized. Let me ask you something this morning. Whether it's the Holy Spirit or some other truth, it may come when you're listening to a sermon. It may come as you're worshiping the Lord as in, in music as we do. It may come as you're listening to something on the radio. It may come as you're reading the Word of God. It may come to you as you're praying and you know that it's truth. And you know that it's God. And you know that He's speaking to you. My question is, when you know that, what do you do about it? What do you do about it? Please don't say, well, that's really good. Wow, never heard of, never thought about it that way. The Holy Spirit gives revelation of truth in the Word, and He's looking for action from our lives. He's looking for a response. It's not just to give us a little more head knowledge. It's not just to put a little more up here in our gray matter. On hearing this, they were baptized. Listen, when you and I obey, and when we obey quickly, and when we obey immediately, God answers our obedience. Some of you are wondering why God is not answering your prayers. Some of you are wondering why God seems to be silent and the heavens are brass. And what I want to say to you this morning is this. Is there an area of your life where the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you and you know it's God. You know it's God and you've just been waiting. You've just been thinking. You've just been resisting. I encourage you this morning to take a step of faith. Take a step of obedience in that area and say yes to God and just jump in. Jump in, whatever it is. If he's speaking to you, I promise you this. When you take that step of obedience, he's right there to meet your obedience with the fulfillment of his promise. He's right there to help you. When you think, I would, but I'm so afraid I will fail. And some of you, you're afraid you're going to fail. You failed before. You think, I, I, uh, I don't want to disappoint God and I don't want to disappoint myself. I, 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 I will. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid when you obey because the Holy Spirit's speaking to you. What God is saying, the subtext to God speaking to you is this. Do not be afraid. I am with you. I will both give you the will and the power to do what I'm, I'm asking you to do, this truth. So I want to encourage you in that, brothers and sisters, this morning. And so God responds to their obedience by fulfilling his promise brothers and sisters the promises in your heart that you've been longing for and hoping for so often so often they are attached to obedience they're attached to obedience it's not a tit for tat it's not a God's bargaining with you don't think that okay don't think God's saying there well if you'll do that I'll do that do you really think God's like that? Do you think Jesus was like that? No, it's not that. It is a heart of love that says, I, I, I'm, I'm on your side. I'm on your side. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm with you every step of the way. I'm going to help you do it. Obey. Obey. F Bad grammar. Obey quick. <laughs> Obey quickly. <laughs> Obey speedily. And watch God. Keep his promise in your life and empower you. Amen? Amen. 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 And, and I'm going to stop there. I've got, two more and a, I've got two more pages of notes, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Um, but, and I think that's where we, where we want to stop. But the Holy Spirit's going to help you, brothers and sisters. Um, he's going to work in your life. He's not going to bring new revelation. That's heresy. The revelation of God is here, but he brings new understanding and revelation of truth that is in his word, and he will do more than show you truth. Okay? Got that? He will do more than show you truth. He will lead you and me. He will bring you into truth, and that will change your life. That will change your life. Not here, but in your heart as you respond. Let's close in prayer this morning. And would you talk to the Lord right now?
And my question is, what is the Holy Spirit saying to you right now? What part of this is specifically for you? I've prayed for you already. Now, you've got to pray for yourself, okay? I can't, I can't make you do it. It's up to you. I've been praying for you and praying for myself that we'd, we would respond. Holy Spirit, God, Jesus, we, we just look to you this morning, and we thank you that you included all of these things, all these great takeaways in your word in these few short verses that seemed like geography up to now. But Lord, you speak to us through geography. So many things for us here. But God, what do you have for us? What do we receive? What do we need to receive into our hearts and then really respond? May we respond to you this morning. We thank you for speaking to us. Oh God, oh God, we look around us, especially in this last month with the Hungry Ghost Festival, and we, we think of all the religions of the world made by man where they beg and plead and supplicate and give you offerings and all of these things and they never hear a word because those are not real gods. But you, O oh Lord, are the one true God. We are so glad, we're so grateful that you do indeed speak to us. You speak to us. And so Lord, we don't want to have hard ears and hard hearts, but we want to respond to you today in obedience quickly. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So brothers and